Hello everybody! It's your friendly digital technology librarian Christy here. We have reached another Friday, so of course I have another Film Rec Friday ready for everybody. Uh, this week we are going to celebrate Women's Equality Day. Now, if you're not familiar, Women's Equality Day happens every year on August the 26th, and it is in place in order to celebrate the adoption of the 19th Amendment. Uh, and that, of course, is the amendment which prohibits the states and the federal government from denying the right to vote to citizens on the basis of sex. Uh, now, the amendment was adopted in 1920, and it has been celebrated as Women's Equality Day ever since 1971. So we are dealing with a holiday that has been celebrated for many, many years now. And it's one that honestly, I wasn't super familiar with uh, until like the last handful of years. And so I'm hoping that the more we talk about it and the more we sort of put it in the mainstream, the more we can become aware and share that uh, knowledge with everybody. So of course this week, all of my picks have a decidedly feminist bent or uh, are very female eye oriented. Now, some of these stories are pretty dark. Some of them are quite light. Uh, I've tried to pick some different kind of topics and themes, but I think they all are very impactful in their own ways. We have some straightforward films that are, you know, really, really brilliantly written and wonderfully acted. We have a couple of incredibly moving documentaries, uh, and I just wanted to sort of include something for everybody in there. So, um, if you are interested in films that do have a female perspective, if you are interested in being part of the celebration, uh, please do check these recommendations out. If none of them uh, happen to catch your eye, be sure to check out one of our three video services, which are Clevenet's Overdrive, Hoopla Digital, and Canopy. As always, all of these recommendations are available to you entirely for free with the use of your Mylan Berlin library card. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the recs. This week we are skipping right over the Clevenet Overdrive uh, recommendations and jumping right to Hoopla Digital. And the first of those recs is for this amazing, amazing French film called Girlhood. Now, Girlhood, as I mentioned, is French, so it does have English subtitles, but as I say every single time, totally worth the watch. Now, Girlhood is one of those challenging films. It's not bright and sunny in any way, shape, or form. But it is incredibly, incredibly moving in a lot of ways. Um, your main character is Marime. Uh, she is living in a really difficult home situation. There's abuse going on. There's definitely crime going on. And she doesn't have a lot of prospects going on for her. She is looking down the road of her to her future and not seeing a lot of options. She ends up meeting this group of three kind of wild, fun, free girls, and she eventually falls into this pack. And, you know, she really comes into her own. The problem is these girls, you know, they're all in fairly similar situations in lives where crime does touch on their daily existence, in lives where there's abuse, in lives where they don't have a million open options to them. So they end up making choices that, you know, are absolutely foreign to a lot of us. Like, you know, they, they choose to commit these crimes in order to succeed within this life that they are currently positioned in and it's and it's tragic and it's hard to watch in a lot of ways but then weirdly enough you also feel like protective of these girls you 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 like them they they are family to one another and you get caught up in their stories and it's it's just as i said kind of a challenging watch but it's it's really really not just moving in, in its own way, but, but also 
insightful in a lot of ways. It makes you question a lot of things, like the way you look at things in regular life. And it, it's, it's just a very, very solid film. And what I really, really loved about it is that Manime makes a lot of bad choices. I mean, she, she makes some terrible, terrible decisions, but she also makes some de decisions that really do put her on track to being in control of her own life, to not necessarily making her environment be what is going to produce who she is in the future and watching her priority shift as the film goes on is really interesting seeing that character's growth and by the end of the film she is no longer going to let others define her decisions she is you know making choices on her own for herself and I think in in that way it's a decidedly feminist film it is you know one of those movies that is complicated and it's hard to watch in places and it's hard to know what to root for and what not to. But I, I think those are some of the best films, the ones that leave you with questions, the ones that have like a little bit of moral ambiguity in places. I mean, those are the ones that make you question the, your own existence and how you interact with the world. And I, I think girlhood does an extremely good job of that. Um, so if you are looking for a movie that will make you ask questions, that will make you root for things that you didn't think you were going to root for, that will just sort of expand the way you look at certain situations, uh, I, I think it's an exceptionally good movie and I think it's totally, totally worth the watch. So Girlhood available on Hoopla Digital. Okay, my next recommendation from Hoopla Digital is for an odd movie, but one that has sort of achieved cult status, and that is for the comic adaptation Tank Girl. Now, when Tank Girl first came out, it was kind of universally panned. I was really young at the time, but I do remember critics being really brutal about it. And, you know, I don't think I watched it until I was probably late high school, early college. And I remember thinking it was like a fun movie. Like it is definitely ridiculous and over the top. It is definitely a, it's definitely an adaptation of a comic strip. And they sort of embrace that element of design and production. It feels like you are in a living, moving graphic novel. Uh, I feel like the acting style definitely has that presentational element to it. Like they're not going for supreme realism. They are definitely going for big emotions, big reactions. They're not trying to be, you know, classically trained Shakespearean actors. And like that on top of the setting, on top of like kind of ridiculous scenarios that you're dealing with, all together come combine into what I think is a really, really fun, zany, like comic book movie. Now, your basic storyline of Tank Girl has you set in this night, uh, 2033 world, which now come to think of it is very, very close to us. Uh, but in this universe, uh, the planet Earth has become this barren desert with very, very little water available. Um, really, there's only one major source, which is controlled by this mustache twirling villain, and he is totally over the top, played by Malcolm McDowell. And McDowell choos chews this scenery like crazy, and he means to. I mean, it's not like he thinks he's doing like realistic acting. He absolutely is trying to be over the top, big, ridiculous, bad guy. And, um, it's, he's, uh, controlling the only water source with the exception of this one little outpost that's run essentially by a commune. Um, and in that commune, you have a number of characters, including Tank Girl. Uh, McDowell knows that he needs to control all water sources. So of course he sends his minions out to destroy this little outpost. And in 
that attempt becomes enemies with Tank Girl. So this entire film is pretty much the two sides sort of clashing together. Um, along the way, you meet Jet Girl, another female character. You meet this band of rebels who are swathed in mystery. They're called Rippers. Um, I don't want to reveal like the sort of twist to the Ripper faction, but there is one and it's really fun. And you have like really solid actors and character actors that you 100% will have seen in tons of other films and TV series like Ice-T plays one of the Rippers. Um, Lori Petty plays Tank Girl. I already mentioned Malcolm McDowell playing the primary villain um, as Kesley. And then Naomi Watts plays Jet Girl. I mean, it's it's littered with familiar fa faces. So you have these very familiar actors performing in a way that you maybe are not going to be used to. Um, you've got this really fleshed out over the top universe. I know I've used over the top a thousand times just describing this movie, but that's, that's really the, the heart and soul of everything. It has that slam bam explosions. Um, you can almost see the little dialogue bubbles going on. It, it's a comic book universe. And in that regard, it's really, really on point. Um, very realistic to that style of world. Um, you also have a very strong thread of feminism running throughout the storyline. Um, Lori Petty's performance as Tank Girl is really something else. She's independent. She is free thinking. She is someone who is certainly going to embody a lot of the things that have been celebrated during like the feminist movements throughout history. I, I mean, she's a really, really interesting character. Um, and then you have the other side with like a, a slightly different kind of figure with uh, Jet Girl. I mean, you there, there are definitely elements of this that have that strong thread. And I, I really enjoy it. I know, I know, again, it was hugely panned when it came out. I think it like made next to nothing. I, as far as like recouping its cost, I think it cost somewhere around $25 million and it only made like six or 7 million, which is, I mean, that's, that's kind of catastrophic really. Um, but in the end, you know, it is very much a cult favorite. Like a lot of people enjoy this movie. A lot of people, you know, reference this film. I know we actually talked about it in a couple of film classes that I took. Uh, so, so it's definitely something that has lasted despite this sort of critical bashing that it took at its, at its initial release. So if you're into comic book films, if you like bright colors, explosions, over-the-top villains, because McDowell, let me tell you, is the over-the-toppest. Um, if you like sort of out-there concepts, and if you enjoy like super presentational performance, make sure you check out Tank Girl. Uh, ignore like all of the critical reviews and just go into it looking for something fun and wacky and zany, and I think you'll have a really good time. So again, Tank Girl available on Hoopla. All right, moving right along to my canopy recommendations. The first of those is for a small, independent, but brilliant film called I Will Follow. Now, I Will Follow is one of those films I had never heard of before uh, putting together this list. I just was looking through a, 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 a series of articles online that were recommending um, stories about strong women and um interesting situations. And I came across this one. And when I watched it, I was just absolutely amazed that more people haven't been talking about this in my particular circle of film, film fan friends. Um, and I will follow, we're dealing with a character named Maya. She is very successful. She has a bit quite full life. She's got this right, the right boyfriend, the right job, you know, everything is seemingly perfect. And then 
in one fell swoop, like her entire life turns upside down and she ends up having to deal with the loss of her aunt. And it's, it's absolutely devastating to her. So this movie sort of travels the journey of grief with her and it does it in a way that is never too lifetimey or movie of the week ish. It's, it's so real. Like anyone who's dealt with a situation with grief knows that no one's journey is going to be exactly the same, but there are still some touchstones that will ring true no matter what, no matter whose story you're listening to, no matter what their situation, they are just certain things that are universal. And this movie does such a good job of latching onto those, uh, especially when we're dealing with a woman who's living a life that so many of us are going to find different from our own. Um, you know, she has lots of family drama going on, but she has like career drama, relationship drama. She's trying to rebuild and redefine herself after this traumatic event. And it, it's, it's just, it's incredibly powerful. Now you have these little pockets of bouncing back and forth between con her, her present time and then all of the things that have happened during her aunt's death. And you, you get to see these moments where she, that she shared with her aunt as well. And, and everything really fleshes out the situation in such a way that again, it feels very current. It feels very pertinent, no matter what stage of life you're in or what situations you're facing. Like it's, it's definitely something that makes you feel so much empathy and sympathy. And, and, and I just really, I thought it was amazing. I, um, it's a film from director Eva DuVernay and it's her debut. And I absolutely will be following the rest of her movies just because like I said, this one was so powerfully done. Um, there are lots of films that deal with grief. There are lots of movies that touch on losing loved ones, but there was just something I don't know. It's, it's hard to explain. There was just something so relatable about this. Uh, and I have never been in her particular situation where the family drama is causing so much more problems. I mean, everybody has family drama though. So you can, you can definitely see where the commonalities lie. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I just strongly, strongly recommend this one. Anyone, this one's for anyone who has ever dealt with a family tragedy like death, anyone who is interesting, interested in watching um, transitional moments in lives, anyone who is just looking for a really well-written, well-acted, well-directed story, honestly, uh, please, please, please check out I Will Follow. You will not regret it. It's a fantastic, fantastic film. Um, probably one of my picks of the week. Moving right along to my next canopy recommendation. Uh, this is for a documentary called Wonder Women, the untold story of American superheroines. Now, this is such a fun documentary. And I know a lot of times I do pick like pretty intense, dark documentaries. This is not one of those. This is for people who love those specials on like MTV, the I love the nineties and things like that. It's, it's for fans. It's by fans. It's, it exudes excitement and fun and it's just for people when you are looking for something that's a really good time. Um, in this particular documentary, you are going to look at the birth of the Wonder Woman heroine. Um, we'll see like the different people who've played her on in the adaptations that there, there have been. We'll talk to comic book artists that have been hugely influenced by that particular character. We'll talk to fans. There's even this little clip of like a very, very young girl all decked out in her teeny tiny Wonder Woman costume talking about why Wonder Woman means so much to her. It's just this beautifully connected generational story about women who have been looking for this like 
like superheroine to to idolize and to follow and to enjoy. I mean, like you've got so many uh, male superhero characters, but up until like the 1940s, there were no women superheroes as far as comics go. You know, so it's it's really exciting to see how this one iconic figure grew into this huge phenomenon that we've got today. I mean, you've got Gal Gadot on millions and millions of TV screens with like DVDs and streaming video playing this this character that generations of women have loved. Um, you get to see points of view from like huge feminist icons like Gloria Steinem. You've got Kathleen Hanna. You have uh, Linda Carter, like I said, the women who have played Wonder Woman in the past. It's just it's just a really fun, interesting, and yet still insightful documentary that looks at all sides of these superheroine characters. You've got like just like the fun fan based like girl power kind of thing going, but you also have like some serious feminist values underlying a lot of storyline. You've got um, feminist values just by there being a superhero that is a woman. I mean, there's there's just a lot of layers going on. And it's, again, so, so much fun. So please, if you're looking for something a little bit lighter, but that still has a lot of insight and that is truly, truly a joy to watch, check out Wonder Women, the untold story of American superheroines. You will not regret it. Regret it. All right, my final recommendation for this week, of course, is another Canopy story. This one is another documentary called Little Stones. Now, Little Stones is a documentary I screened actually at the library a couple of years ago, and I have not forgotten it since. I'm actually super excited that it's uh, going to fit in with the topic this week. This documentary is phenomenal. Now, Little Stones follows like narratives of four different women in completely different parts of the globe, all four are using their own art in some way to make a difference in their own communities and in their own personal lives against massive, massive odds. And each of their stories is unbelievably powerful and has this unique nature to it, but they all have this common thread at the same time. And that thread is, you know, meant to be viewed as a thread that we all carry through. Um, it, it's, it, it follows, as I mentioned, four different women. You've got Panmela Castro. She is a graffiti artist living in Brazil. Um, her particular region is faced with huge amounts of domestic violence in her, in her particular community. She herself has faced a, a difficult, difficult situations. And she uses her art to express her own story, her own pain, her own recovery, as well as to tell other people's stories. And, you, you know, to see this beautiful piece being created and, and and pieces that are all over the walls and, and, and the houses and the, the community she lives in, seeing these stories become something beautiful is, you know, exceptionally moving. It, 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 and that's just how art works in general, to, 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 to tell stories and to bring powerful, uh, sometimes painful emotions to the forefront. And her story is one that, you know, you know, you can see in any art. Um, you've got Sohini Chakraborty. She is um, a woman fighting against sex trafficking and uh, supporting sex trafficking survivors in India. Uh, she's a dancer and she creates, uh, she choreographs these pieces to help sort of express the pain of the situation. Um, You've got Fato Diata, that's uh, Sister Fa is her stage name. She's this Sengalese hip hop artist who, you know, she's quite a controversial figure throughout West Africa and she regularly tours. She's already fighting against um, a, a, a largely challenging uh, industry that does not necessarily look at female rap artists as 
equal or as skillful as male artists. Uh, you, you've got um, Anna Taylor, an, an American fashion designer who is using um, her platform to sort of uh, create uh, clothing and a clothing line based out of Nairobi. And um, she is trying to create a small economy for this particular neighborhood. She's gotten to know these uh, a number of young women that she's grown very close to. And she's trying to create awareness of the particular situation in her, that town, as well as creating her art with her through her fashion. Uh, it's, it's just, it's just really fascinating to watch all four of these stories. And then as a consequence, think of all of the other millions and millions of stories that are going around uh, on around the world and how much we can glean from everyone. Um, all of the different things that people are trying to do, um, different ways that they're trying to do it. Um, so yeah, if you're looking for a really lovely little documentary that is very personal, you, you, there's, there's a sense of intimacy with each of these four stories, um, then check out Little Stones. It is an excellent, excellent documentary. And I, I, I hope that uh, all four of these women are still doing well today. Okay, so that is it for my recommendations for this week's episode. As always, thank you so much for joining me. If you have any recommendations of your own that you would like to make, please comment with them below. As you know, I love, love, love getting recommendations. I'm always looking for new films to try out. If you have any recommendations for themes that you would like to see us explore in the future, please comment with those as well. Uh, so again, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, if you found any of these titles particularly interesting, please, please, please consider like, consider liking and subscribing. Um, and with that, I'm going to close out the episode. Thanks so much. And I will see you next week. Bye-bye.